Um, the other day we saw at Odeon the Big Short, which uh, is the one kind of ensemble piece with Christian Bale, Steve Crow, Ryan Gosling, Brad Pitt. And uh, we saw that screen on screen, so it hasn't been released in the UK just yet, has it? For no, no, I think it's... Has, has it got a US release? I think it's already gone round in the I US. I think it's already gone round. But, um, yeah. yeah, what did you think of it? Though? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I found it really enjoyable. It was kind of quite a good watch. Um, it was definitely kind of in that kind of Oscar film kind of... Yeah, you said, yeah. Oscar line bait. It's like, it's um, the weird films that you know would only come out this time of year yeah, exactly. yeah yeah like they don't really have an audience apart from the fact that they're nominated and people want yeah. to watch them because they're watching all the oscar films yeah like it's, it's a really weird thing to describe but that said it's it's a really interesting film it um tackles something from our lifetimes actually that is yeah still and it's, it's like and still has effects yeah. like quite often we see these you know big pieces tackling kind of controversial like you know government like conspiracies or you know this isn't exactly a conspiracy but big things that have affected um you know our lives and it's really interesting to see one so this actually deals with the um uh the basically the kind of financial crash of 2007 yes 2007 2007 basically when the the housing market bubble burst essentially and if we sound like we're very educated about the topic, it's because we watched the film. <laughs> yeah. now and we know everything about <laughs> <laughs> economics. Masters. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the really funny things it does do is, uh, I guess, the cameos that it uses. So it's yeah, I did got... not expect. Uh, my, I mean, I came into it with literally no information. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't even seen the trailer for it. Yeah. But um, yeah, there are some great celebrity cameos in it. I mean, I don't really want to spoil I it really in case someone. Me, but, but it's yeah, it's. I mean, it has some definitely moments where you think the film is going one way, and then they just kind of slow it down, and then. I mean, I, I don't typically like it when films slow down just to explain stuff to you, but I think this handled it in the best way it possibly could. Yeah. And especially for a comedy, in essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a. It feels weird to call it a dramedy. Yeah. I mean, because that sounds <laughs> like you think of Shakespeare or something, but it has definitely like the it's it's real life drama, real life kind of things that happened with just the drama with the comedy that comes from typical conversations, and then over the top comedy yeah like it's there's no like middle there's no like slapstick or anything like that yeah. it's just conversation jokes and then jokes that the director put in essentially <laughs> yeah it's yeah an eclectic taste i guess isn't it of, yeah like, yeah jokes and stuff like that um another thing that's quite interesting with it is we, we've previously talked about is the editing on it it's um works yeah. with kind of a very interesting kind of montage style where it chucks in you know sound bites clips different images that kind of show the acceleration towards you know the actual crash itself just documenting yeah. basically some of the moments you know through from like 2005 2006 2007 building up that time and um it's what i would say is i definitely think it has uh the potential to alienate some viewers i think it's undeniable yeah like, no so i definitely it, agree at it, the beginning it is, it's sort of a bit overwhelming isn't it it is yeah. a little bit overwhelming at times and it does you have to keep up with it. Like sometimes you can blink and you'll miss like a shot or something. I mean, yeah. I know they're not integral to the narrative, but it's, it does mean you're mm. kind of fully awake. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you do, it makes you concentrate yeah, more. And it also actually. it's, it's kind of, I think it's good for getting the confusion of essentially the whole point of the film is that no one really knew what was what happening. Was happening yeah. yeah. And it, I think it does gets that across very well, but um, yeah, that's true. And I mean, some of the shots, I mean, it's not like action movie shots where like they'll blink and you miss it and you like a car's exploded (laughs) and you don't know why that car's exploded. I mean, it's just people talking in a room. So it's not like you've, you're not losing the plot, but you're kind of occasionally you're like blinking and you're thinking, oh, what was that? Yeah. But um, I think in any other year, if it wasn't going up against Fury Road, this get, this would get editing Oscar. Yeah. Because it's just, it's. It's one of those films where it definitely brings editing to the forefront. Yeah, it definitely brings editing to the forefront. But I, I wouldn't say... Mm, I could definitely say it nominated. I, w- I wouldn't necessarily say it would win because it's not something that we have... It's something that we have seen before. It's kind of a technique that's kind of coming a bit more forward. Like Steve Jobs uses it a bit at the start of this kind of like mm. chucking together kind of pop cultural images, sound bites, clips from infomercials, you know speeches just things to create an instant kind of cross section of like yeah it's time. basically a collage essentially yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah it's literally pastiche it's literally just yeah. postmodernism. <laughs> <laughs> we're well we're very intelligent film reviewers yeah, yeah. 
But... Getting down dirty with the theory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to get my really pretentious point out of the way, but right. it's the one the film that it really reminded me of all the way through was actually uh, Orson awesome World documentary, Orson awesome World's documentary, F, F for Fake, mm. which is his like below um, Citizen Kane. Uh, it's essentially like his most, I'd say it's his second popular film. Yeah. And it's a documentary all about fraud. And it's essentially, it's very much a similar style in that there's one story, there's several stories going off at the same time. Yeah. It branches between the two. And the essentially, that's also the exact same editing style. Like, it will freeze frame on certain things. It will draw stuff in. The character, like, the narrator will come in and tell you stuff. And it's I thought it was interesting that he's essentially, the director and editor kind of, in a way, wanted to just re reintroduce the idea of well, just bringing back efforts for fake into a modern setting in that yeah. it's not just a documentary now. It's it's with A-list celebrities. Yeah. And it's like the next it's like the next generation's version of that. And I thought that was really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I I, I haven't I haven't seen that particular film, but it, mm. it does kind of the edit style does kind of recall that kind of like essay film kind of yeah, style. Yeah. Own and documentary. It's, 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 it's kind of feels like it doesn't feel mockumentary. Yeah. Um, I know the director's done a load load of episodes of The Office. I think actually. Oh, has he? Because I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, the cinematography like really is like it's, The Office, isn't it? Yeah, um, like the camera will zoom mid shot, like it, like it, like yeah, a documentary, go essentially. In and out of focus. Uh, occasionally, that I did find that a bit. Annoying. The out of focus was on, a bit annoying on at the times. Cinema screen, it was like okay. You can yeah, notice it definitely. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. It's really weird seeing out of focus. Um, like, like it sounds really stupid, but like seeing like an out of focus like image of like. Um, like Christian Bale or Brad Pitt or something on yeah. the cinema screen. It's really like disconcerting. I don't know why. It was like just bugged. I me. definitely I feel like they probably kept that stuff in because I feel like they wanted to get the imperfections in to make you think that it's yeah. more real. And also I remember like uh there's a great variety interview with the editor that you could go see on their YouTube channel, which is where I stole some of the information that I've talked about from <laughs> not the F fake thing, that's all me. But um <laughs> and he was talking about how like if you want to get a realistic film you you use the shots where the actor doesn't think that they're f- being filmed. Being filmed. And yeah. like and I remember um with the Steve Carell interview that he also said about how Adam McKay shoots with loads of cameras going at the same time. Oh, kind yeah. of similar to what Fury Road did, which is why I kind of think the editing is quite impressive with both of them. Yeah. But um and it's definitely just like you feel even though the outer like the outer focus shots, they kind of sometimes stay out of focus for the whole thing and yeah. it is a bit disconcerting. But I can see why I could see the argument yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely understand why they're there. It was just a kind of a Yeah, it's just person, a personally off putting. Yeah, yeah. Person, yeah. I think um, another thing to bring up, though, is among the cast, Christian Bale, again, gets a nod for a supporting role. and um, Yeah, he did all right. Yeah, he did I all mean, right. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't say it was a bad performance, but I wouldn't no. say it's not like... It's not... He he doesn't get a moment in any point. No. Like, he, and, it's and just... Unless you want to count him just... <laughs> doing, just like, a job. So, yeah. Drums, basically. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just... It's a... It's a like any of those actors you could give the same award to yeah. and it would be the same amount of deserve essentially yeah, he can share his nomination <laughs> yeah four, three, I, mean, so. I thought it's quite funny when you when you showed me the poster just now and yeah. it's got brad pitt on it and brad pitt is literally five minutes of screen yeah, time brad pitt is like kind of a, an assist he's like kind of a periphery character to two characters that are in the kind of like the four yeah, main yeah. ones he makes it onto the poster who are those he's, two guys? The he's, young guys. <laughs> there's like three main stories, yeah. and the smallest one, he's an offshoot character of the exactly, smallest story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he probably got less time than some of the cameos we were talking about at the beginning. Oh, one thing, he's he was a producer on it. Ah, uh, um, okay. There right, now it explains and it. Also, yeah. it made me chuckle because he's also the kind of the most, um, even though it's kind of done like ironically, and he's kind of a laugh at kind of character because he's kind of like a bit of a tin hat, like yeah, yeah. kind of character that's like he wants to go live off the land and like <laughs> sow the yeah. seeds and all oh, that's a funny pun um, <laughs> and all that um, but he's like ultimately the guy that just like rejects the system and it's really funny that yeah. that, that Brad Pitt as a producer cast himself in the kind of actually the most benign character <laughs> I, I, I don't know I just found that really I'd funny I'd say uh, yeah yeah actually and I also think that even though he had such a small role he actually had one of the most kind of it's not an emotional film but he definitely had one of the more emotional moments of the mm. film uh it was between that yeah. and oh god steve carell yeah. uh with the with a kind of a dramatic moment where they they build it up a tiny bit but it's not mm. dwelt on like with other films where it'd be the whole yeah. thing is they built it around this personal strife but um yeah. i think they both did they were the two if you could call point one person out as 
having a standout moment, I think yeah, those two would be it. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think Steve Carell is definitely the stand. Like, uh, I'd say yeah, he's the main actor. He is definitely the main actor, and um, yeah, I, I felt like his performance is very, very convincing. It was very, yeah. very good. I, I, I like Steve Carell in some of these serious stuff. Like, whereas you've got other people like Jonah Hill and Seth Rogen that have kind of moved from you know comedy stuff to occasionally doing roles yeah. in. Oscar picks, and um, I'm pretty sure Jonah Hill's definitely in one this year. Um, uh, oh, the Coen Brothers. Coen That's where you're thinking oh, of. Hail Caesar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and like, while I like them in these ones, like, you know, seeing comedians like, yeah, transition yeah. to these, Steve Carell, I think he actually does have a lot of acting potential as well. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he's basically just done, I mean, he's done comedy, and now he's done two grumpy roles. <laughs> I, w- <laughs> yeah. I want to see, like, uh, I want to see him try a really quite emotional yeah. Role because at the moment he does do just so he does the gormless characters and then he just yeah. does the angry characters mm-hmm. and I want to see yeah like a difference in between the two yeah. but I do like him and yeah. I think it's definitely all the comedians that are kind of going into Oscar dramas at the moment yeah. it definitely shows that if you can make someone laugh that's one of the hardest things to do and that they can do anything else yeah. essentially after it ten- that it generally does tend to be the smart ones that are writers like. Yeah. Isn't it? Cause they, they, they've all ri- they've all ri- you know written their own material and stuff like yeah. that. And, yeah. Um, so it's interesting they're trying to get in the big leagues, <laughs> <laughs> get some get some serious awards. Yeah. As well. But fair enough. I'm excited for it though. Yeah. I want to see what else he can come up with. Yeah. What what he's going to do in the future. Yeah. Though. Definitely. Um, but going back to Christian Bale, like I I thought he's just kind of in this nomination again for like the same thing he always does of like yeah. you know play a an eccentric supporting role. And in this one, he's he's fine in it. He's great. You know, he's enjoyable to watch on screen, but it's not better than any of his previous supporting roles. So I definitely rule him out of the running for this. Yeah, no, I I'd, if I think if he <laughs> if he won the if he won the award, he wouldn't. I don't think he'd deserve it against some of these guys yeah. this year. I mean, th- yeah, this year. 